Hello there and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now this week is part two of the hidden patio, which as you can see over my shoulder is not quite so hidden anymore. Now for those of you who are new to the channel, now this hidden patio came about because one day I decided to try once and for all to find out why year after year in summer part of my lawn was going brown and I found a hidden patio underneath, quite a large area of hidden patio made of slate stone. So today what I'm going to do is the last stage of cleaning between the cracks, then I'm going to give it a nice power wash to clean it up, then I'm going to actually start planting and on the way of course I have to get rid of my dear old Cotone Aster that got so damaged or fatally damaged in the blizzard and ice storm we had about two months ago. So time to get cracking. This is the very last crack I have to do. This stage took me longer than I had anticipated because it rained non-stop for about a week so this became an oozy muddy mess. There's about four or five fingers of depth here in places and others it's a lot more shallow but because this is quite a big rock surface and of course in summer we get up to 38 to 40 degrees this rock is going to start radiating heat so I need a ground cover plant sorry they're taking down several trees the next door and um, so sorry for the noise I need to be able to plant something in the cracks. Something that's going to give me beautiful flowers for a long period of the year. And also something that's going to be able to withstand not only our winters, which are very, very cold, but also our summers and also radiating heat from these slab stones. So what I'm going to do is test out several plants. One of them is going to be the Mexican fleabane, which I have on order, the seeds I have on order. And I think a beautiful place for that uh, would be tucked in here against the sleepers of this raised bed. Now this is going to look lovely tucked in here, all around here, and indeed the idea would be to plant it coming down the steps so it sort of falls over. Now Mexican fleabane has several varieties, some of which are only about 15 centimetres tall, but others unfortunately are about 30 centimetres tall, well over two feet. And here in Spain I can get the seeds, but they give you like the surname but they don't ever give you the named variety so I know I'm going to get Mexican fleabane but what Mexican fleabane the small one the big one I've no idea but even if I get the larger one tucked here against the back part against that raised bed against those sleepers having like a wild flower costly feel is going to look absolutely gorgeous no matter what the size also next to the lawn I'm going to put just little pockets of campanula now I'm just going to give you a walk around so you can just see it I'm just coming down from the front porch and this path now winds its way around. It looks a lot better now that it's free of mud and weeds. And then it opens out into this larger area here. Now all of these paving stones have been underneath grass for about 20 years. What I want to do now is with the pressure washer, you can see that over there, the yellow, is just clean up these stones a bit. After having pressure washed this, you can see the colours, absolutely gorgeous. Now it's a shame I haven't got a bit of sun on this. It's almost like a it's almost like an iron colour here, mixed in with blue. Now it definitely looks a lot better now since it's been cleaned up. I'm pleased with that day's work. Now I can go in and have lunch. Woo! <laughs> Phase two of the hidden patio is about to begin. So before I can start planting, I need to remove. And that means removing what's left of my old friend, the weeping Cantoni Aster. Now if I get up close you can see the top graph is completely destroyed by the blizzard. It's cracked right down as far as here. This is now all soft. It's completely rotting away. You can see the sawdust coming out of my fingers. Then if I follow further down here this branch also splits right up to the top and again it's rotting away. So it's time has come to an end. So this one's going to be removed today at least the top part of it knowing that there's a new chapter beginning in this area. So let's get cracking. Well, that's looking a bit sorry for itself. 
I need to take off these branches here and I also want to cut the stump, leaving more or less a stump of about a foot in height. The reason for that is when I'm actually lifting the stump itself, it's often useful to have some sort of lever. It makes life a lot easier. Now I am going to be planting Campanula as just one of the three or four varieties of plants I'm going to be planting in among the gaps between the paving stones. Why Campanula? Well first of all because I like it and secondly because my mum and dad used to love it and it's always nice to bring a bit of their garden to your garden. So let's get planting. Right, now the first thing I'm going to do is just loosen up the soil because it's still quite moist from the rain and then I'm going to mix this in with some good sterilised topsoil all around. I want to put a little bit of planter. Now this should spread out as far as here and it'll be contained within both the stones and the grass and it'll spread out again as far as here and then probably backwards as well. If it starts spilling over too much, well it can always be cut back once a year. In many other areas of this hidden patio I'm going to be actually just putting topsoil and sowing seed directly. But Campanula, I just want to give it a little kickstart just to see something, get a little bit of instant gratification if you know what I mean. Well, at the moment, the Campanula is looking a little tad sad and very, very much alone. As you can see, if I can just pan it over here, you can just see the odd few poking out there. But it is a start. And once, of course, I start sowing seeds, this is going to pick up very quickly. Now, if you'll notice, the area that's planted has topsoil in it. The area that's not planted doesn't. There are so many cracks and so many holes to be filled in that I would never in a million years remember which one is sown and which one is not sown. So the idea is, hole in the ground, fill it with topsoil, put the seed on, Bob's your uncle, on to the next one. And that way I'll say, okay, this one's done, this one's not, this one's done, this one's not. One way to help the memory along. And I'll just keep going until I am finished this very, very large patio. And of course, I'm going to have to dig out that as well. But tomorrow's another day. Right, well today I'm going to be doing two things. On the one hand, I'm going to be planting seeds. Hopefully it's Mexican fleabane, but your guess is as good as mine. This came from World Seeds and I opened it. Oops. <laughs> and inside was a packet of not very many seeds. No name whatsoever. So your guess is as good as mine. Is it Mexican fleabane? I haven't a clue. What I'm going to do is plant it next to the sleepers which is a nice protected area and just in case it gets higher or taller than I was anticipating at least it's out of the way and I won't fall over it. Now the other thing I've got is this, it's a plant called Musas reptans or Creeping Musas, M-U-Z-A-S. Now this plant is quite big so I'm going to be dividing it possibly into three or maybe even four to plant into the little cracks. In the month of April I'm expecting a lot more seeds and probably in my visit at the end of this month to a garden centre I'll probably pick up some more ground cover plants. It sounds like a bit of a mix match. Maybe a mix match is good. A bit like a succulent tapestry. Sometimes a whole lot of different plants together can actually make a nice hole. Either way I need to try a whole growing season with several different types of plants. So I need to know what is going to be able to withstand both the cold and the heat. So I'm going to go through a whole growing seasons with a whole different variety of ground cover plants and see what does well and what doesn't. And in the month of April I'm expecting a load of seeds because this is a large patio area, a large number of cracks and I certainly need a large number of seeds and I think I've got about six to seven thousand seeds coming in so I should have enough at least to cover part of it.
Now it's got a spread of about 12 inches. So six inches spread either side is going to take me virtually up to the edge of the pocket. What I'm going to do now is get the rest of these planted, get them watered in, and that'll be that. Now, before I plant up the rest of these, I want to get this close up to the camera so you can see it. This little flower is like a lilac flower, it's terribly delicate. And if you can see on the inside there, it's got little like polka dots. They look like a little set of wings. It almost looks like an insect landing on the flower, doesn't it? Like as if it had two sets of wings and that would be its body. It's absolutely sweet, an absolute doat. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I certainly have enjoyed getting my hands dirty, filthy actually, and starting to actually plant something, both seeds and little plants. Now, throughout the month of April, seeds and May, probably directly plants, I'm going to be planting up more and more crevices because in actual fact, there's a lot, a lot, a lot of gaps and crevices, a lot more than I had originally anticipated. But of course, I originally thought it was going to be a small area for a little round table and a couple of chairs. Little did I know this mega structure existed below my lawn, so I was certainly in for a surprise. And it's going to look lovely, I think, when it's uh, finished. Certainly for me, it's going to be really interesting to see which plants, and I have my favourites, but you don't know if your favourites are going to be the ones that, that take or not take. I'm going to be very interested in seeing how these different types of ground covers adapt to the extreme cold and extreme heat. Very interesting to see. Now, of course, I'm going to be giving you updates throughout the season how these uh, elements are spreading or the seeds germinating. And of course, there's going to be new elements brought in, the containers, a set of containers I want to bring, and also the Japanese maple and the wedding cake tree. So things are moving. It's going to be quite a project. And I hopefully by the end of the year, I'm going to get a glimmer of what it's going to be like next year, because next year it should be in its element. When the trees really start to sprout, the ground cover starts to spread. Everything looks a lot softer and less new. So please do subscribe to the channel and follow me throughout this season and hopefully a lot of growing seasons to come. And I'll see you all here next week, next Friday, here in Granny's Garden. Bye bye now. So what's looking good in the garden this week? Well, I have to give it to the anemone coronaria, the bride, because this has been blooming for weeks. And if you look at my hand, it's about the same width as my hand. Huge flower, very, very open. Obviously, it closes in the evening when there's no light, opens beautifully in the sun, in the morning. And the flower lasts for ages and it is naturalized beautifully in this garden. I'm sorry, this is the second time I've shown them to you, but I absolutely love them. First time in my garden, I planted them last year and absolutely stunning. I'm really pleased with them. Really, really pleased with them.